put your hands together for Foreigners lead singer Kelly Hansen, who is here with us today. Hey, sweetie. Yay. Hi, y'all. Can you hear me? Here we go. All right. I was telling Kelly a few minutes ago that I started at the river 14 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long now. And my first interview when I was here was him. And we were, I think we were at the Hard Rock Cafe. We were doing something live for you guys somewhere. So we were on, and you were so easy and fun to talk to. And I was. Well, I'm glad you have a memory for both of us. Yeah, there you go. Because you've probably been interviewed by many, 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 many people since then. Are we on Facebook Live yet? Is it time to announce that we are on Facebook Live, everybody? So that's fun. And if you are watching us from Facebook, we're inviting you to type in questions that we'll ask after I'm done with my portion of questioning and grilling, Kelly. You know it's not going to be too bad. Um, one of the first things I wanted to ask you about was you were, you just sort of reminded me that you were a working musician at a really young age because you're a year and a half younger than I am. And I thought if I had been asked, uh, Foreigner to me is like my high school years and college. It's like, oh my gosh, it just, it, it just puts me at a time in my life. And if I had been asked to sing lead for that band uh, in, at any time in my life, I would have lost my mind. So tell me how that felt to you after what you had been up to in the, at your life. Well, I, uh, at, at the time, right before I, I joined Foreigner, I had, I had reached a, a, a turning point in my career where my whole career, th gigs just came and dropped in my lap. And, um, and I was always kind of a all my eggs in one basket type of guy, as opposed to some musicians who were out doing, you know, 17 different things. Although there was a time when I was in four bands at one time. But um, oh <clears throat> at, at that time in uh, late 2004, I was, I was, I was doing a lot of uh, music producing and engineering and artist development and songwriting and things like that because uh, when 1991 rolled around, my voice was not uh, kind of an in-demand thing for rock music. So uh, I had gone off and done other things for a while and said I, I knew I was going to have to sit this out and, and wait for music to, music is cyclical, so I, I knew that if I waited long enough, you know, my kind of voice might be in favor again. So, but it got to a point at, at the end of 2004 where I was just, I wasn't, I was doing more work for less money because of the technical, technologically how the music business was now you were making records in bedrooms and things and producer budgets were getting lower and lower and things like that were happening. So I uh, <coughs> said, I'm going to start looking for other things. Some, someone had gotten a gig that I wasn't even called for. And I was like, wow, that I have to rethink my modus operandi about how I work. And I said, I'm going to go out. I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to say uh, yes until I can't say yes anymore. And uh, and I was online, and I saw this uh, this uh, uh, article about a charity event that Mick Jones was doing with with some fellow musicians, a couple from the from Foreigner, but it was called Mick Jones and Friends. And I thought to myself, wow, I hadn't even thought about what's going on with with Foreigner at the time, and and Lou had left in 2004. Uh, so I th I just started making some phone calls, and I said, what's what's happening with this thing? Is 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 this a new Mick Jones project, or is it Foreigner, or whatever? And and it came around to me uh, that they were starting the foreigner machine again. You know, it takes a while to get the big machine working again. And they were starting to, to look for a voice. And, and I was looking to do something because I wasn't working what I was doing. Uh, so it was kind of just um, uh, serendipitous that we both came together at that time. And I, I had, they were coming to LA to do some rehearsals. And I said, well, can I come down and jam? Uh, with with the guys and and I and I made sure I I said can I be the first person that they w see I don't know why they were in L A whether they were listening to other singers or whatever so I said can I, they're coming in on Saturday they're gonna be there at one o'clock can I be there at one thirty and so uh, so it's a little inside secret be the first person because when they find who they want they don't keep looking so oh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah so uh, we jammed for about an hour and a half and I was you know. It was n nervous for me, and I had a lot of lyric sheets around. And but I drove home. I got home an hour later, and uh, I got a call, and they said we want to do some shows this weekend. Can you start rehearsing tomorrow? So I had five days to uh, to do that. And 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 I didn't know this, but in the rehearsals, um, 
they were recording their rehearsals, and during the breaks, Mick, Mick would go out into the hallway and listen to the, what we had just done. Because sometimes it's hard to hear in a rehearsal room like what you really want to hear. So he was able to listen to it in a mix, and so uh, apparently he, he liked what we heard, and of course I knew the band and the catalog, the reputation and the, all that stuff. So I got a call, and I, and I hadn't been on the road in 14 years, <laughs> and I just realized that my life, life was going to change. It, it w I knew it was going to change that way, and it just took off like a rocket almost 20 years ago. I, what I can't believe is that, or I find really hard to believe, is that you came into a band, and it, it happens, it happened with ACDC, right? A member um, dies or leaves the band, and for them to be able to come in and still be, so Foreigner at that time, to me, it seemed kind of tenuous what the future could have been. If it hadn't been somebody like you who came in and filled those shoes, it could have ended 20 years ago, and we wouldn't have had all the joy we've been having all these years seeing you guys live. Tell me, because I, I can't imagine that Mick Jones is the easiest person in the world. I don't know why I think that he might be a little prickly. So tell me about your relationship with the founder of the band. Well, that's funny that you say that, because he and I have always been really simpatico about how we think things should be done, the way we think things should sound, how the songs should be performed. We were always in sync like that. Uh, we've always been in sync. And um, and I think that's just the oddity of two different people and then a different set of two people. And um, he was always really open to hearing my opinion. Uh, telephone. <laughs> uh, <coughs> he was always open to hearing my opinion and taking my suggestions. I mean, really, really good about it. And I was I was so thankful for that. And and I was able to write this whole album with him in 2009. We did Can't Slow Down. That was really g great, and it was and it was really magnanimous of him to offer me that when he really didn't need to. And uh, so I find that the opposite has been true wow. with Mick. And um, he's he we just have the same uh, mindset about the show must go on, and you know, damn the torpedoes, and and. Um, and we have a little discussions in the studio when I'm doing a vocal track, and he, I go, I want to do it this way, and he goes, Well, why, can you do it this way? And and I go, Well, I'm the singer, you know, let me do it this way. And and he goes, well, Why don't we do it both ways? And then we'll both know which way sounds best, which is true. Which way usually sounds best? Yeah. Uh, it it, it, it depends on, oh, okay. on the depended on the uh, example. Okay. What about uh, tell me about the songs that you sing? because most of them you, you didn't write. Like what, especially initially, what did you just love to perform live of Foreigner songs? What were just fun for you and your voice? That always depends on the night and really? so, so many factors like, uh, is it big audience, small, indoor, outdoor, hot, cold, is the stage wooden? Uh, uh, all sort of fac factors go into how you are feeling about and experiencing a song on a particular night, even though we're doing a similar set of songs, it's a completely different experience and new experience every time because of all those factors. Yep. So um, it, it more for me, it, it, when you're talking about early on initially, it was more about me trying to get everything right, trying to give it th the essence that I had uh, in my head, the idea of, the, of what it needed to be in my head to be right. And um, I, I never get it 100% right, and uh, it's always a challenge, because it's a challenging set of songs. It really is. Mm -hmm. And that makes me ask, too, I can tell you're, you have a lozenge or something now. I don't. We, oh, you don't? I just have a large and grotesque tongue. Okay. <laughs> so as you suck on your tongue while I'm asking this, um, when you were talking about like you were doing three or four gigs at a time, what do you do for your voice that, I mean, because really, we were just watching you live. And your voice is extraordinary. What do you do to keep your voice in great shape? I, I mean, it's, it's, it's as complicated and full of minutia as anyone else who's really good at, or really trying to be good at what they do. There's a million things that go into it mentally. And, but uh, basically, I have to, when I'm on the road, which is nine months of the year, uh, I'm not a diva, but my voice is. And... Um, <laughs> So I have, to, I have to cater to and pay attention to and coddle and protect my voice, which means no yelling or screaming or staying up late nights smoking cigarettes, telling rock and roll stories at some pub somewhere. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's all about that. The show 
has to be the apex of my day. Um, so everything is, is about the voice, what I eat, what I drink, and how I sleep, and all that is just to try to be the best I can be. And that's, uh, it's a very, um, it's a, it's a tough task to, to take on, to try to do that. Like every day, I, all I'm doing is thinking about my voice and how, how's it going to be tonight? How's it going to be tomorrow? What's it going to be like next week? Um, because I don't want to do less than great. You know, I want to do my best for all you guys. And, um, so I think it, you have to dedicate yourself to that. I just read a story yesterday. Roger Daltrey like had to stop in the middle of a show. He was afraid he was going to blow out his voice. And I was like, Ooh, what would it have been like to be at that crowd? Right. Ooh. You know, because, of course, the crowd wants their money's worth. But I love that it's it's that serious a thing. And, of course, it would be. What about COVID? I was thinking about the downtime with COVID, especially because we were so lucky here. We got to still come into work. Um, Nick is here with me. And it was one of those things where they said, do you want to? And we said yes. And we were very, very careful. And there were very few people in the building. But for most people, they were sequestered at home. I don't know how I would have dealt with that. But I, I saw a lot of rock stars come out of COVID and it was like they had been renewed. Like all these people that I thought were going to retire were like, I am ready to go back out on the road. It's like the best thing ever. Did that, what happened with you during COVID? Well, I, I had been kind of in my mind, just kind of secretly hoping. I was saying to myself a couple of years prior, I'm like, oh, it would really be nice to take like six months off. Um, because we're just, we're, we hit it hard all year long, most of the year, all over the world. It's... um. I'm very fortunate to be able to do, we all are what we do, but I, I'm allowed to say it's tiring. <laughs> and uh, yeah. um, so I've been thinking about like his, oh, I just wish there was a way I could have a little bit of a break. So I think COVID is my fault. <laughs> and, no uh, ego there. <laughs> right, but, uh, but, uh, but for me, for me it was uh, the first four or five months it was like, oh man, what a break. I just get to rest my voice and, and I, you know, cause I have a, a different voice off the road than I do on the road. In fact, when I'm on the road, sometimes I have to tell people, explain to them, like, I'm not angry, I'm not unhappy, I'm not unexcited, I'm just keeping my voice at a monotone so that it's, you know, I save my voice, which is a really weird thing to, not for, not only for me, but for other people, you're yeah. talking to me, you go, okay, yeah, yeah, I, was, oh, I just want, got a brand new car and won a million dollars. I'm just, that's so great, I, it's, it's really exciting, and you know, so, uh, so, and then after that, uh, I was telling you that I, I saw the seasons change at my house for the first time. Uh, I'd been in this house since 2007, and I'd never seen the seasons change. So, that was kind of unusual. And then uh, I cooked every day, because I really like to cook, and I was on Chopped, and I won. And yes, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I cooked every day. I, in a year and four months, I had one takeout curry and I went to sushi once. Every other meal was made at home because uh, I just really enjoy it. And uh, so that was really nice. And I got to spend time with my wife and family. And uh, that was really great. I got married during COVID. So that was another great thing. And I found the only country, I mean, the only company uh, that was able to marry online and internationally. My wife was in England, and I was in L.A., and we got married on the Internet. How romantic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been mad. <laughs> Wait a second. How did that work? What do you love to cook? What's your favorite oh, dish? Just, there's, there's no limits to it. Um, I like to cook everything. I like the French food, Italian food, the Spanish food, uh, Asian, any kind of. Uh, Asian have been the latest thing that I've been kind of trying to delve into and, and kind of learn the 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 spice palette and the flavor uh, profile of that kind of thing. That's been uh, really fun for me. And just different techniques. And, and I, like, I like to just cook and just take my time and relax and make a meal. It's, it's, like, it's like writing music. It's like the pots and pans are your instruments. The ingredients are your melody and lyrics. And you can put together anything that you want to create a song or a, or a dish. And it's, so it's very much like writing. Uh, but there's no record company breathing down your neck and and you don't have to worry about you know messing up or or, or satisfying thousands of people or whatever you know so that's so awesome. I do like to do that that's uh, now I want him to cook something for us <laughs> next time you come yeah, okay. <laughs> before the show how about that uh, the idea of Las Vegas to see shows in Las Vegas 
to me. I, I just love it. I remember seeing Tom Jones there 25 years ago with my mom. Not unusual to go out with anyone. And it's the most pristine sound. It's like so crisp sitting. It's really a great place. What about this residency for Foreigner? Well, we've done the Venetian before, so we're, we're back to do it again. And, and it's uh, the different thing about doing a residency is that you normally on tour, you arrive, you set up, you play, you break down, you travel to the next show. And the crew uh, has, uh, they work really early and to really late. The, the difference for Vegas is you go, you set up, and you stay set up. And it it's a much more stretched out. You can stretch your legs and, and kind of uh, have a, a, a deeper break. Um, I'm not having to go in and out of airplanes and buses and all that, and traveling to the next show. And it's, and, uh, and you, you can, you can your, your food thing for me, which is important, can be a little bit more sussed out and regular. Um, so that gives you a different mindset to those shows. And, and you're able to do a couple of different things because um, you are set up and staying set up like that. So, so there's a, it, it's a very different experience. Plus, in Vegas, everyone, people are coming there from all over the world to that house. And if you, if you go here, then most people are going to be from Atlanta. But uh, that's another thing that makes it different. You must enjoy it. Have, is there anybody that you've seen in Vegas? Any uh, bands that? Oh, I don't think so. I think I saw Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I can't okay. remember. You 2 is doing Vegas next, too. That's yep. That to me is going to be very interesting to see how they bring it to it. But I just, I love that. And I think that the idea for the crew has got to be a really nice thing. I think they, that they like enjoy that, it. too. Yeah. Right, do you gamble? No. I okay. learned a long time ago not to gamble because uh, we play a lot of casinos and uh, you know, once in a while I would walk downstairs and put a hundred down on, you know, blackjack, but you know, just yes. Like, well, you know, what am I doing? I'm a gambler. Yeah. I love it. Any new music for this tour? Uh, I'm not sure about this tour. There's, there's a lot of music in different states of completion. Um, and that might be more stuff that we're doing sometime down the road. I'm not sure. It's very hard to finish and, and record material when we're on the road so much. Yeah. So maybe being off the road might you know, make that more uh, accessible. Um, I think we're going to be spending a lot of time on the hits that everybody's known all these years over the course of this band's career. I think that's the, the smart thing to do. There are a lot of them. There are really a lot of them, so it would be a good thing. Um, the idea of a choir. <coughs> I, did anybody grow up in Atlanta? Some of you, yeah. I went to Northside High School. They had a school of the arts. And so my, that was my dream. My dream was to like um, be on Broadway and sing and you know that kind of stuff. So I, I love choirs. So when they started doing I, with I Wanna Know What Love Is, bringing choirs to sing back up for you, I just thought that was astounding. And then now you're gonna have choirs opening for Foreigner? Yeah, uh, I too am a product of the public school music system. There you go. And I was, I was in choir in school. And um, the fact of the matter is is that uh, there's been a, a constant string of um, uh, budget cuts, and the first thing they cut is the arts and music programs. And so we started this many years ago with the Grammy Foundation to kind of raise awareness. One of the aspects of it was to raise awareness about that fact so people could get involved and, and try to help um, change that situation because the arts, in my opinion, helps make a well-rounded person. It takes a person out of their 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 local sphere and, sh and shows them the world in a way that maybe they would never get to experience on their own. And that, I think, when you have that exposure, you become uh, a better informed and well-rounded well, well person. So uh, we decided to have these choirs come up and then COVID came along and then we couldn't have choirs come up on stage. So for this farewell tour thing, we, we decided to do something new. We're, we're gonna have uh, youth acapella choirs submit uh, a tape of themselves to uh, possibly come and open for us at our show on this tour. And we're going to have uh, more than one group open the show before Loverboy comes on and before we come on. They're going to come on. They're going to open the show. And then we're going to work out a way where the audience, I think, gets to uh, vote for the winner. And the winner will receive a an L1 uh, PA system from Bose and a... And a, and a uh, monetary prize and all the par participants will get um, some money which will help their choir program so when we look at it um, I mean really everybody wins and, and I get to see the faces of 
of these kids and I get text messages or emails from choir directors and and parents telling telling us you know how much this meant to their their child and I've had parents tell me that well their child had decided to go into you know uh, music and and that's really amazing I think we get the be the better end of the the whole deal really it's so smart it really is because who doesn't like an acapella group and then they, they have to they're gonna try out singing foreigner acapella Right? Well, uh, they're not going to sing foreigner songs. Not on stage, but right. that's what they do to, to try I, out. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that's that's really exciting, and I think it's great. Uh, Atlanta is the tour kickoff. July, July 6th, 6th is right. is the date. Tell us um, what you love about Atlanta. You know, you're a California guy. Well, unfortunately, most of the time on the road, you're in a place for less than 24 hours. Um, on the on a rare day off, you know, I, I think I've had a day off here, and I'm usually going around trying to look for the best place to eat. So, uh, so that, but but really, I think that down here you really get a sense of how friendly and and nice people are, because uh, I've been a lot of places where I, you don't get that sense. So that's I think something ex exclusive to uh, the South, and it's for and real. Yeah, too. It's, yeah, it's yeah. it's great. So I do like that. Awesome. Any special surprises for the farewell tour? Well, we don't know yet because some of those th th things might be off the cuff. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, all the former members are always welcome to sit in, and we're going to be having them, a couple of them come uh, in, in Vegas. Um, but I don't know because I don't know who might find out that we're, we're doing this and say, hey, I, I, maybe I like the band and maybe could I come play with you guys? I don't know what. And you guys I, are always open to that? Well, it, 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 you know, there, sometimes there are the restrictions or limits or things that can't make it happen, but, but I'm, I'm looking forward to possibly doing that. That would be fun. I don't know what might come up, yeah. but that'll be the great thing about it. Exciting. Well, are you ready for English Nick to come up with some Facebook Live questions? And can we take a question from the audience? Sure. Let's take a first question from the audience. Nick, come on up. Right here. Your name and where you're from? My name is Perry. Perry? Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain. Hey, hello, hello, hello. I think I think they can hear you. Can you hear Perry? Yes. No, that's okay. No, that's all right. Go ahead. They can hear him in there on that. He can hear you. They can hear him. I saw you on Ridiculousness TV show. Yes. For the millionth time, if you could tell us how you came up with Double Vision. <laughs> well, uh, Mick and Lou were attending, uh, uh, I think it was a New York Rangers hockey game. And uh, I guess the goalie got hit with a puck. And uh, they were talking about it and talking about how he had double vision. And that kind of just struck Mick as a great phrase. Because Mick is always looking for a great phrase or a great twist of a phrase. Um, and I think that's how many hit songs are conceived. It's It's out of something that's... Uh, everyday, ordinary, and you don't really think about it until you put it in that context. Right. Yep. Well, it's, they're, they're great song titles. Foreigner's got a lot of great song titles. Nick, have you got some Facebook? I, I, I'm sorry, Nick, this is Kelly. Hello, Kelly. Kelly, English. You're all right. We, we've met before, mate, up <laughs> yeah, at the oh, old yeah. uh, Ameris Bank Amphitheater <laughs> yeah. uh, for the birthday bash a while ago when you played our birthday okay. bash. Right, right. Uh, so we talked about the goalkeeper who got the uh, puck in the head. Right. Uh, Veronica Wright Daniel says, Kelly, have you ever gotten her on stage? And then she goes on to say, I think she's, this is a positive thing. You're all over the place on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you should see me in my head. Uh, uh, I have gotten hurt uh, many times. Um, sometimes in ways I can't tell you. Uh, but <laughs> but there's been a lot of... Um, oh, well, uh, okay, so, so see these posts on either side of the stage here? Um, sometimes when we're doing a show, the stage and the lights are suspended by this type of deal. And there have been times when during a guitar solo break, I might climb up these things. And one time I was, I was, I was coming, small, I was coming down, well, they're, they're bigger ones at I the show, but so I was coming down and you see the, um, the, the 45 angle bars there. I was coming down one of these trusses and I had a ring on my pinky that was at the top of it was shaped like a, like an axe blade. It was very w w tall and wide. And I was coming down. My ring went into the V of that 45 in the pole. And I tried to jump down, and I didn't know that my finger was held in there. So it ripped the ring and the flesh right off my finger. 
and my ring went into the audience. My crew went and got the ring. They got it. They got it. But uh, you know, it's the things like that 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 happen. Uh, there's all kinds, knee things and foot things and toe things and finger things. All kinds of things like that happen. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Allen had more of a comment. He said, uh, "Kelly Hansen is great. Very sorry to hear that Foreigner is calling it quits." So I just wanted to let you know that. Well, that's very nice. Well, I love say. And is you know, that what it is? And I and I want and I and I I do want to convey to everybody that it's 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 not lost on anybody in the band, including myself, how fortunate I have been to be involved with not only this band but my band members and all of you guys. And it's not a, not a decision that I made uh, lightly. And um, but I've been in this business for more than 40 years, and I've been giving it my all, and I'm singing songs in a tenor range that were meant for a 20-plus-year-old person. And um, it gets a, get a little bit more difficult every year to, to do these, and I refuse to do them in a way that's less than they deserve and less than you guys deserve. So uh, it's not the end of my life. Um, and we still have these songs in, in so many different ways to see and hear. And, um, uh, but I think that sometimes I say to myself, um, well, I could do this for longer than I should. And I could do what a lot of people get accused of doing a lot, which is like, well, he's doing it, doesn't really need to do it, but he's doing it, he's trying to make some money out of it. And, all, and I'm, that's just... That's just not it for me. It's 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 about presenting these songs faithfully and giving them their due and doing the right thing. And I want I want to get out and live my life while I'm still early enough to to do all the things I want to do. And that's really what it's about. One more question from me. Uh, now you're married to a British lady. She's Polish, living in Britain. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was going to say, have you mastered the British Sunday roast yet? Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. I, 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 I've been doing that for, you know, all, and I we were just talking. I was talking to my uh, my manager because I I was saying that I I had a, a sausage and potato butty. It's yeah. Called, yeah. So uh, which sandwich. I, it's a, yeah, it's a more of a north thing, but uh, yeah. Uh, and what else? What else have I done that's English? Yorkshire puddings. Oh yeah, I, I'm oh, good yeah. at that. Yeah, that's oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Spotted some things yeah. or others. Spotted. We can say it. Spotted dick. Yeah, it's a dessert. Oh, okay. No, it's I knew dessert. there was a spotted something. It's just a sponge cake with currants in it. Yeah. It's nothing, and then you put custard on it. That's what makes it spotted. But people have fun with the name. Yes, there you yeah. go. As long so, as you don't have a spotted dick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So when you come back, you're going to come That would be in, a reason to stop touring. You're going to come to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just stop. You're going to come to Atlanta a couple of days early and cook for all of us, right? Ah, uh, well, you know, anything's possible. <laughs> Kelly, thank you so thank much. You. We're so excited for you thank guys. Thank you guys. I love you guys. And yes, and thank our listeners. And Facebook Live, thank you.